The project to recreate the chandeliers in the drawing room here at Kensington Palace started in 2016 and came out of our restoration of the King's State Apartments over the previous years. And it's really the final icing on the cake of uh, these wonderful Georgian rooms where we want to bring back the sense of the magnificence and the richness of the court of George I. Uh, one of our problems was that the chandeliers had completely disappeared and we had no idea what had happened to them and we didn't think they survived anywhere in the world, probably thrown away, having become redundant and a bit woodwormy. So we looked back at the records in the National Archives at Kew and we found a, a brief description of paying for them, so we knew roughly what they were like and how many arms they had, how large they were, how much they cost. And there was one visual record we had of what they looked like before they disappeared in about a hundred years after they were made. And this was a, a watercolour made for a book of images of the royal palaces at the time. And from that we began to recreate uh, early sketch designs as to how they might appear. Apart from uh, the drawing we had very little to go on. There are very few surviving chandeliers because most of these chandeliers were made from wood and they used to break uh, very easily over time and I think probably when electricity came into fashion, a lot of these chandeliers were taken down and disposed of because they were badly broken. Once the drawing's complete and we've, we've approved the mouldings, we then start to construct the uh, whole thing with timber. From that stage, we then start to produce the wood carving. It is then covered in gesso, a plaster-like substance, and all this detail here is carved into the gesso. Once it's gessoed, it then gets uh, gilded. We, we wash the gold very delicately and we use coloured pigments just to age it and tint it. In this case, it's going into a room with old gilding already in situ and uh, the, the ageing technique will help it blend in with the room. This is exactly the same process that would have been used in the 18th century, apart from the fact that we only have four carvers working on this and probably in the 18th century they would have had 50 carvers working on, on something like this. So there are eight strands, as I say, that assemble to make the rope. You start with a single strand and put a little bit of twist into it. You then twist two together in the opposite direction and then all four are then twisted back again so you've got eight strands assembled into one large rope which you all balance twist left and right until you get a smooth finished untwisted rope. The machine that we use was second hand in 1899 when my grandfather took it over from a French company that's been used almost daily for the whole of its life and is still being used daily. It's so much thread assembled together and twisted together that it'll, it's almost unbreakable, I would think. All the parts for the tassels are hand-spun, the gimps, the cords, all the different components. It takes a while to make, but it always is something that will last generations when it's done. One of the great things now is we can see all four chandeliers together for the first time hanging at their original height and in the right place and we can see how they light the room as if they were it was lit by candlelight again and we can see the full effect which is impossible to completely imagine once you're working in a workshop and meeting. So it's a wonderful experience to see them back in the palace after 250 years.